Well, Bertley, that's a great question. Um, I would have to say, honestly, football was not even in the picture. When my wife and I, Diane, came here in 2002, we just knew deep in our hearts that there was just unlimited potential for Anderson University. The university had some great opportunities at that point, but many of the things that we enjoy today were just simply not possible without making some interim steps to build the institution up and to gain strength. So, transparently, I don't think we were thinking of football at all. <laughs> But now we are. But we are now. That's right. What point in time did you say this might be something that Anderson should undertake? Well, it was not until the last probably five years that I began to really think about it seriously and begin to think with our trustees and a few of our donors and staff. So uh, it's just a it's a recent uh, it's a recent idea, but it is a natural development, I believe, in the maturity of the institution. So when you think about the history of Anderson, how do you think they would respond? How do you think they would think about the start of a Anderson University football program? Yeah, great question. A great deal uh, is written in the first history of Anderson College about Annie Dove Denmark, the longest serving president, who by the way was the first woman college president we understand in the South. Uh, and I'm pretty sure, I'll venture to say, that she would be absolutely shocked <laughs> that we are starting a football team. But I think if she had lived, continued to live, and she were with us today, having experienced history over the last few decades, she would have probably said, this is the right thing to do. Because uh, she was very visionary, and she had the perspective and the wonderful spirit and attitude that that there is nothing that this institution cannot accomplish. There's a wonderful passage in that original history of Anderson College where she says that someday Anderson College at that time would would startle South Carolina and the world by what we could accomplish if we would just depend on God to help us. Mm. And those words echo in my ears and in my heart every day, really. So uh, I think she would be excited, pleased, and think that we're doing the right thing. Well, you know, and with, with her intentionality and, and her, her willingness to take risk, I think there's a lot of similarities between her leadership and our leadership today with you and Ms. Whitaker. So when you think about risk, you know, we're, we're starting a program that's going to cost a little bit of money. You know, we're going to hire coaches. We're going to, yeah. you know, bank on the idea that the, the university will grow with this. So what sort of risk did you say, you know, when you, when you were looking at it, did you say, you know what, it's worth it? You know, this, this sure. is the great next step for Anderson. And, and do, you, do you have any worries about that? I wouldn't say that I have worries. Um, I have... I will have concern until we have raised the amount of money that we need to raise for this initiative. But going back to Annie Dove Denmark once again, Annie Dove Denmark was a realist. And not only that, she was a risk taker. Mm. And the depression, uh, it was uh, Annie Dove Denmark who said, we need to start admitting men to the institution. It was her leadership that led to Anderson College becoming a co-educational institution. I'm reminded of a story when Annie Dove Denmark went to the Baptist Convention and she literally, at that meeting that happened every year, she literally took a wheelbarrow out onto the stage of the Baptist Convention and she said to the Baptist pastors and lay people of our state, uh, we need you to fill up this wheelbarrow with money <laughs> because we have an urgent mission, an important mission, and we need your help in supporting us. And I, I think that we're at that point again with all people who love and support Anderson University today. 
uh, we have this wheelbarrow out and again and we're saying fill it up because of what's happening here. It's urgent, it's important, and if we don't do what we are doing, then someone else may not. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yes, there is some risk involved in anything like this, but I've been around Anderson long enough to realize that in our DNA, we have this ability to identify opportunities and seize upon them and then do whatever we need to do to make it happen. And so I'm confident that that's going to happen. There's no lack of confidence there whatsoever. We have this attitude here that there's nothing that we can't accomplish if we have the mindset and the right spirit and of course the finances <laughs> to do what we need to accomplish. And so we're just a can-do institution. We don't bite off more than we can chew, uh, but once we decide that we're going to do something, we're serious about it and we get the job done. So, you know, when you're talking about fundraising and supporting AU football, and that's a big piece to us really beginning the, the excitement that is this. So when you think about the opportunities that lie ahead for folks to really give and be a part of AU football, you know, what, what are some ways that you see, you know, corporate sponsors, you see uh, philanthropists, you see alumni come alongside Anderson and support what we're doing with football? We have been very blessed and fortunate to have the support already of a number of companies and individuals in this campaign. We have a donor that has provided the naming gift for our field and Sparrow Financial Field. We also have donors who have stepped up to name parts of the new football operations building, which is going to be an incredibly beautiful and inspiring building situated right at the end of the football field. Um, it's not going to look like your typical football operations center or football field house. It's going to look somewhat like an academic building. And so um, the physical facilities that we have, we already have a field that is turfed um, and we have a long range vision and plan for the field. We're not going to build substandard facilities because we're on a budget. We're going to build incredible facilities, but we're going to build them when we have the money to build them. And so that means that we ha may have to wait for a few years to have a, a grand entrance to the stadium um, or a, uh, uh, a president's entertainment area. We'll make do in the football operations center until we can afford to build something appropriate. So we're being responsible. I think that's something that donors really care about. They want to know that we are not putting the university at risk and that we have a plan to pay for what we are going to build. I would say pivotal in this consideration of football was meeting a very unique individual in uh, the person of Melvin Yance. Mm -hmm from Fountain Inn, South Carolina. He's been a philanthropist for many, many years, and he has helped so many causes, and his perspective is broad. He believes in education, he believes in ministry, he believes in uh, helping those institutions that are willing to take risk. And he came along and said, I believe in football like no other donor you've ever had and I'm going to offer you $3 million as a challenge gift. And he said, here's the deal. I'm not gonna give you one penny until you've raised the money for uh, this challenge. Mm -hmm. And by that he meant, when you raise a dollar, I'll match it. And so over the last few years, as money has come in from other donors for the football program, we would let uh, Mr. Yance and his uh, family and associates at his organization know that we've raised those dollars and then he turns around, sends a check to match those. And so he hasn't waited until the end of the process of us writing, uh, raising the money. He is incentivizing us to go ahead and collect the money now and then he will match that now. And that's been a very smart strategy on his part and it's also motivated us to raise these funds. And I hope it motivates 
and continues to motivate our donors. I would argue, as, as I've heard you chat about the history of Anderson and, and you've shared about the future growth of Anderson, you, you've often shared that you feel like we're in a position of strength. Yes. So when you think about football and you think of, of that position of strength, how do those two relate? If you look at the development of football on campuses in our country over the last probably 20, 30 years, many of the programs uh, that you see started start from a necessity uh, at the institution to recruit students. And football is a great way to recruit students, not only to recruit football players, to, but to recruit other students who enjoy um, watching football and being a part of a campus that has a football culture on the weekends. But while I have understood through the years that that is a perfectly legitimate reason to begin football, it's not something that I would want uh, to uh, use as a justification at Anderson University. And by that I simply mean I don't want to begin football, never have wanted to begin football, as um, a means to recruit students, but to begin a football program because it's time and because it can contribute to the vitality of the institution and because we have the finances and the commitment to do it and to do it well. And so I believe that's why the timing now is right to do this. And this has come more into focus in the last few years because we have seen that we become the largest private university in South Carolina, even without a football program. And we believe that football, because of its unique culture and the appreciation for football, particularly in the South, that the largest private university in South Carolina it should have a football team and a football program that will attract people and give our students um, the unique experience of coming to a thriving university uh, that plays football and where people get excited and look forward to the weekends because of what's going to happen. So, bottom line, we're going to be successful at this, but we're not there yet and we still need the help of individuals, companies, and everyone who loves football in our area That's right. to support this program that is going to be a program because it is built from a position of strength that I believe will be very unique in our area. So Whitaker, we've talked about all types of things needed to start a program, but when you think about one of the most important things, or if you can pinpoint one of the most important things that really helps us start a football program, what do you think that is? Well, absolutely, it's hiring the right head football coach is incredibly important. We understand that we shape this university one hire at a time. And something as important as our football program, we want to make sure that from the very beginning we hire the right person for that job. And that means someone who not only understands the sport and can lead a team to win, but someone who has unquestionable integrity, someone who understands and appreciates our faith-based mission, someone who can understand that we are going to continue to uphold our academic standards at Anderson University, and also to understand that we want our football players to be model citizens mm -hmm. on our campus. We want our football players to be leaders not only on our campus, but also leaders in the community. Now that is a tall order. That's a lot. People told me from the very beginning, this is the guy you need. And um, I wasn't sure, but I did get to know him. And the more time I spent with him and the more I heard his heart, the more I realized they are absolutely right. We need this man. Of course, you agreed. Absolutely. And a lot of other people agreed and had the full support of our Board of Trust. And we ended up with, I think, one of the finest football coach coaches in America That's right. to lead our team. And that is Coach Bobby Lamb. 
Coach Lamb. Here he is. Coach. How are we doing, guys? So, Coach. Let's get started.